Yeah, it was. Yeah, a far better performance all round, really, than the first three games. Um, you know, Trotty getting 100. Anytime anyone gets 100, you're, you're in the game, and, and most times you go on and win. So it was an outstanding innings from him. I thought Matt Pryor gave, gave us real impetus at the top, and you know, I think showed everyone what he can do at the top of the order there. I think that was a, a useful innings for us. Um, and, you know, we probably probably a few too many soft dismissals again, but 299 is always going to be a you know, certainly competitive total Adelaide. Uh, the bowlers did a good job. Obviously, uh, Collingwood and Trot did, a, did well taking the pace off the ball. And, um, you know, the rate was always climbing. You're, you're, you're sort of experimenting a little bit with the balance of the side in this season. Could Collingwood seriously play the fifth bowler with the leaders from Trot and then Yeah, I think... Uh, on certain wickets, you know, I don't think you could do it on every wicket, if I'm honest. But um, on wickets like this one, I think he's as useful as anyone. He's obviously got so much experience. He's got good variety. Um, so he asked some questions of the of the opposition batsmen. They need to play big shots, and you know, sometimes that's a hard thing to do when there's no pace on the ball. No, I think he was uh, he was just feeling a little bit unwell for some reason. Yeah, well, I mean, Trotty was kind of doing a good job as well. So we, we were thinking about maybe using him in the power play, but we didn't in the end. Which part of your game were you uh, more delighted um, by? Obviously, uh, in the team to get hundreds. You know, obviously, very happy to do that and, and set up a, 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 a very good title uh, when we, we felt we could defend. But uh, when called upon to bowl, it's always nice to be able to contribute as well with that. So, you know, very happy days. And we all know how cricket can be. It can be, you know, a nice game, and it can be a horrible game sometimes. I guess it, it sort of helps, Jonathan, when you can go in early and dictate the terms of the innings at your own pace, if you did tonight. Yeah, I, I think so. Obviously, uh, Matt Pryor at the other end, the way he was going and playing it, just knocking it around and you know picking up the old boundary, you know, uh, when it came along with the opportunity presented itself, was uh, uh, obviously made it easier for me. But uh, the way he played, but obviously with, when we lost. Uh, the three wickets. It was important that we we didn't have uh, what, what we had in Sydney a sort of progression of, of wickets, and it was important that I hang around. I hung around, and uh, um, was a little bit disappointed to get out in the manner I did towards the end, and with the power play looming. So, something to work on definitely for for future games uh, when batting and, and setting totals or chasing even. There was quite a lot of competition places in Manchester. Kind of places, fifth bowler, one of them can't play. So, so you're aware you've got to think of. This is a chance maybe you have to nail down a World Cup. Mm, yeah, yeah, definitely with my sort of bits and pieces bowling as well, I suppose you say. Well, how are you just coming there? Well, just bits and pieces. <laughs> <laughs> how serious are you about it? Obviously, I'm coming kind of retiring from Test cricket. If you could bowl 10 hours a day, that's what I'd be Yes, I've, been, I've, I've had a chat with David Saker, and you know, we're going to work hard at that. And you know, If I could bowl uh, like Carly has on this tour, and uh, it'll definitely, I think, help the side, definitely. Mike Clarks, have you inquired on the umpire about possible instruction field when you bumped into Brett Lee? Can you talk us through that incident? Um, well, I turned around, one, um, thinking about trying to hit the ball away, but obviously I was thinking if I'd hit it, I might hit it onto the stump, so I left it. And then I've turned around when I've heard Matt calling yes, and then I've just run straight into Brett Lee. So I didn't see him coming, literally. He was like a freight train. Uh, <laughs> feels very good, actually. Um, especially after being, you know, three 0 down the, in the series, it was a must-win game for us. Uh, we came here determined to play well, um, and we're delighted to have won. And I think that gives us a bit of momentum heading into Brisbane as well. Uh, yeah, obviously turning in a sort of circle is the quickest way. You know, it's going backwards and forwards in a straight line. But you know, if you happen to get in between the ball, then so be it. Um, I don't think it's a conscious thing. I think it's just something that happens. Uh, you know, and it's just part of the game. It's what happens when you're trying to scamper back and diving in towards you know, getting in, in is, is the most important thing. Do you think there's a danger of getting borderline obstruction? Would veer off 
quite sharp things and getting them mm. on in Sydney, you know, using bats, bat and board or bats is, is probably the next step in there. Is it kind of getting the borderline board or struck in the field or something? I think there might be something probably wrong if you're worried about getting out of the way of the ball instead of trying to get back in the crease, to be honest. Yeah. So I think trying to get back in the crease is your main objective. Sure, yeah. But you know what I'm saying? If ch changing your angle of running to, you know, to stop the, prevent the ball from being thrown off the stumps, is, is that getting close to obstructing the field? I don't think so. I'm not doing that on purpose.